Ancient Roman Cuisine, Wikipedia Article Audio Ancient Roman cuisine changed over the long duration of the ancient Roman civilization. Dietary habits were affected by the influence of Greek culture, the political changes from kingdom to republic to empire, and the empire's enormous expansion, which exposed Romans to many new provincial culinary habits and cooking methods. In the beginning, dietary differences between Roman social classes were not very great, but disparities developed with the empire's growth. Meals Foods and Ingredients Traditionally, a breakfast called intaculum was served at dawn. At midday to early afternoon, Romans ate cena, the main meal of the day, and at nightfall a light supper vesperna. With the increased importation of foreign foods, the cena grew larger in size and included a wider range of foods. It gradually shifted to the evening, while the vesperna was abandoned completely. The midday meal prandium became a light meal to hold them over until cena. Among the lower classes of society, these changes were less pronounced as the traditional routines corresponded closely to the daily rhythms of manual labor. Among the upper classes, who did not engage in manual labor, it became customary to schedule all business obligations in the morning. After the prandium, the last responsibilities would be discharged, and a visit would be made to the baths. Around 2 p.m., the cena would begin. This meal could last until late in the night, especially if guests were invited, and would often be followed by commis satio, a round of alcoholic beverages. In the period of the kings and the early republic, but also in later periods, the cena essentially consisted of a kind of porridge, the pools. The simplest kind would be made from emmer, water, salt, and fat. The more sophisticated kind was made with olive oil, with an accompaniment of assorted vegetables when available. The richer classes ate their pools with eggs, cheese, and honey and it was also occasionally served with meat or fish. Over the course of the Republican period, the Cena developed into two courses, a main course and a dessert with fruit and seafood. By the end of the Republic, it was usual for the meal to be served in three parts, one course, main course, and dessert. From 123 BC, a ration of unmilled wheat, known as the frumentatio, was distributed to as many as 200,000 people every month by the Roman state. There was originally a charge for this but from 58 BC this charge was abolished by the plebeian tribune Publius Clodius Pulcher. Individuals had to be citizens and domiciled in Rome to receive the frumentatio. Cooking Originally flat, round loaves made of emmer with a bit of salt were eaten, among the upper classes, eggs, cheese, and honey along with milk and fruit were also consumed. In the imperial period, around the beginning of the Christian era, bread made of wheat was introduced, with time, more and more wheaten foods began to replace emmer loaves. There were many kinds of bread of differing quality. Typically the white bread was baked for the elite, with darker bread baked for the middle class. And lastly the darkest bread was the one for the poor peasants. The bread was sometimes dipped in wine and eaten with olives, cheese, and grapes. At the time of the destruction of Pompeii in AD 79, there were at least 33 bakeries in that city. The Roman chefs made sweet buns flavored with black currants and cheese cakes made with flour, honey, eggs, ricotta-like cheese and poppy seed. Sweet wine cakes were made with honey, reduced red wine and cinnamon. Fruit tarts were popular. 
The ancient Roman diet included many items that are staples of modern Italian cooking. Pliny the Elder discussed more than 30 varieties of olive, 40 kinds of pear, figs, and a wide variety of vegetables. Some of these vegetables are no longer present in the modern world, while others have undergone significant changes. Carrots of different colors were consumed, but not in orange. However, some foods considered characteristic of modern Italian cuisine were not used. In particular, spinach and aubergine were introduced later from the Arab world, and tomatoes and capsicum peppers only appeared in Europe following the discovery of the New World and the Columbian Exchange. The Romans knew about rice but it was very rarely available. There were also few citrus fruits. Alcoholic drinks Butcher's meat was an uncommon luxury. The most popular meat was pork, including sausages. Beef was uncommon in ancient Rome, being more common in ancient Greece, it is not mentioned by Juvenal or Horace. Seafood, game, and poultry, including ducks and geese, were more usual. For instance, on his triumph, Caesar gave a public feast to 260,000 humiliaries which featured all three of these foods, but no butcher's meat. John E. Stambor writes that meat was scarce except at sacrifices and the dinner parties of the rich. Fish was more common than meat. Aquaculture was sophisticated, with large-scale industries devoted to oyster farming. The Romans also engaged in snail farming and oak grub farming. Some fish were greatly esteemed and fetched high prices, such as mullet raised in the fishery at Cosa, and elaborate means were invented to assure its freshness. Dormice were eaten and considered a delicacy. A status symbol among wealthy Romans, some even had dormice weighed in front of dinner guests. A sumptuary law enacted under Marcus Aemilius Scorus forbade the eating of dormice, but failed to stop the practice. Fruit was eaten fresh when in season, and dried or preserved over winter. Popular fruits included apples, pears, figs, grapes, quinces, citron, strawberries, blackberries, currants, damson plums, dates, melons, rose hips, and pomegranates. Less common fruits were the more exotic azaroles and medlars. Cherries and apricots, both introduced in the 1st century BC, were popular. Peaches were introduced in the 1st century AD from Persia. Oranges and lemons were known but used more for medicinal purposes than in cookery. Although known to the ancient Romans, lemons were not cultivated in Italy until the Principate. At least 35 cultivars of pear were grown in Rome, along with three types of apples. Cato described pear culture methods similar to modern techniques. There are recipes for pear and peach creams and milk puddings flavored with honey, pepper, and a little garum. Notes Many kinds of vegetables were cultivated and consumed. These included celery, garlic, yellow squash, cabbage and other brassicas, lettuce, endive, onion, leek, asparagus, radishes, turnips, parsnips, carrots, beets, green peas, chard, chicory, green beans, cardoons, olives, and cucumber. Some vegetables were illustrated in reliefs. The potato, tomato, and chili pepper from the New World were not available in ancient Roman times nor were French beans, zucchini, and corn. While the precursors of Brussels sprouts, artichokes, sweet peas, rutabaga and possibly cauliflower probably existed in Roman times, the modern cultivated forms we think of were not developed until the late Middle Ages and early Renaissance times. Cabbage was eaten both raw and cooked. 
Cato greatly esteemed cabbage, believing it to be good for the digestion, and also believed that if a sick person ate a great deal of cabbage and bathed in his urine, he would recover. Legumes were limited to dried peas, sweet peas, lupins, lentils, and fava beans. The Romans knew several varieties of chickpea, such as Venus, Ram, and Punic. They were either cooked down into a broth or roasted as a snack. The Roman gourmet Apicius gives several recipes for chickpeas. The ancient Romans ate walnuts, almonds, hazelnuts, pine nuts, chestnuts, and sesame seeds, which they sometimes pulverized to thicken spiced, sweet wine sauces for roast meat and fowl to serve on the side or over the meat as a glaze. Nuts were also used in savory pesto-like sauces for cold cuts. Nuts were used in pastries, tarts, and puddings sweetened with honey. The Roman colonies provided many foods to Rome, the city received ham from Belgium, oysters from Brittany, garum from Mauritania, wild game from Tunisia, silphium from Cyrenaica, flowers from Egypt, lettuce from Cappadocia, and fish from Pontus. Cheese was eaten and its manufacture was well established by the Roman Empire period. It was part of the standard rations for Roman soldiers and was popular among civilians as well. The Emperor Diocletian fixed maximum prices for cheese. The manufacture of cheese and its quality and culinary uses are mentioned by a number of Roman authors. Pliny the Elder described cheese's dietary and medicinal uses in Book 28 of Historia Naturalis, and Varro in De Agricultura described the Roman cheese-making season and compared soft, new cheeses with drier, aged cheeses. The most extensive description of Roman cheese-making comes from Columella, from his treatise on Roman agriculture, De Re Rustica. Jessalem was a broth with grated bread, eggs, sage and saffron, described in Apicius, a Roman recipe book of the late 4th or early 5th century. Garum was the distinctive fish sauce of ancient Rome. It was used as a seasoning, in place of salt, as a table condiment, and as a sauce. There were four major fish sauce types. Garum, Lyquamen, Muria, and Alac. It was made in different qualities, from fish such as tuna, mullet, and sea bass. It could be flavored, for example mixed with wine, or diluted with water, a form popular among Roman soldiers, although the emperor Elagabalus asserted that he was the first to serve it at public banquets in Rome. The most costly garum was garum sociorum, made from mackerel at the New Carthage fisheries in Spain, and widely traded. Pliny wrote in his Natural History that two congii of this sauce cost 1,000 sesterces. 1,000 sesterces in the early empire was equal to four ounces of gold. One of many modes of cooking in ancient Rome was the focus a hearth that was placed in front of the Lararium, the household altar which contained small sculptures of the household deity. In homes where the Lararium was built into the wall, the focus was sometimes built of raised brick into four sides, constructed against a baseboard on which a fire was lit. More common was a focus that was rectangular and portable consisting simply of a movable hearth with stone or bronze feet. After the development of separate kitchens, the focus began to be used only for religious offerings and for warmth, rather than for cooking. Portable stoves and ovens were used by the Romans, and some had water pots and grills laid onto them. At Pompeii, most houses had separate kitchens, most fairly small, but a few large, the Villa of the Mysteries covers a 9 by 12 meter area. A number of kitchens at Pompeii had no roofs, resembling courtyards more than ordinary rooms, 
this allowed smoke to ventilate. Kitchens that did have roofs must have been extremely smoky, since there were no chimneys, only high windows or holes in the ceiling. Many Roman kitchens had an oven, and some had two. A square or dome-shaped construction of brick or stone, these ovens had a flat floor, often of granite and sometimes lava, which were filled with dry twigs and then lit. On the walls of kitchens were hooks and chains for hanging cooking equipment, including various pots and pans, knives, meat forks, sieves, graters, spits, tongs, cheese slicers, nutcrackers, jugs for measuring, and p.t. molds. In ancient Rome, Wine was normally mixed with water immediately before drinking, since the fermentation was not controlled and the alcohol grade was high. Wine was sometimes adjusted and improved by its makers, instructions survive for making white wine from red and vice versa, as well as for rescuing wine that is turning to vinegar. Those instructions as well as detailed descriptions of Roman viticulture date back to 160 BC in the first known text written in Latin prose. Wine was also variously flavored. For example, there was passum, a strong and sweet raisin wine, for which the earliest known recipe is of Carthaginian origin, mulsum, a freshly made mixture of wine and honey and conditum, a mixture of wine, hot matured. One specific recipe, conditum paradocum, is for a mixture of wine, honey, pepper, laurel, dates, mastic, and saffron, cooked and stored for later use. Another recipe called for the addition of seawater, pitch, and rosin to the wine. A Greek traveler reported that the beverage was apparently an acquired taste. Sour wine mixed with water and herbs was a popular drink for the lower classes and a staple part of the Roman soldier's ration. Beer was known but considered vulgar, and was associated with barbarians. <laughs>